Welcome to FaithWorks, the enlightening and empowering program that builds your faith to help you overcome every single challenge in this life. My name is Kaude Adeshoga. I'm your host. I want you to sit back, listen, and be blessed. God bless you. God ministered to me and said to me that the body of Christ, the church, universal, needs to move forward forward. Needs to what? Move forward. Most people confuse the Christian race as a prayer and a fasting routine or lifestyle. Christianity is a personal walk with Jesus based on decision taken. The prayer and the fasting is to help you take the decision. The Bible says, by faith, Moses refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. That word refuse is a compound word that means he took time to think, to ponder, and arrive at a decision that I would rather go with the slaves than go with royalty. And God is asking the church, is giving them till end of February 2020. He says, I'm giving the church till end of February 2020. And everyone to take a decision to move forward. In Matthew 26, and I want to say this, not to confuse it with anything. The Lord is not asking the church to fast. He said, in fact, your fast is wearying me. You fast in December, you fast in January, you go 21 days, 40 days, 70 days, 100, 200 days. He says he's weary in Isaiah 58. He said they weary him. They weary him out. In Deuteronomy chapter 2, I don't know whether Moses was fasting and praying. God said, enough. Turn northward. Enough of that Whatever you're doing, turn not the word. In Matthew 26, Jesus was praying. He needed to take a decision about his life and advance towards purpose, which was the cross. And he went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he prayed for three hours. When a man prays and he says, Father, I will this cup to be taken away. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And he leaves the prayer closed after one hour with such a statement. Has he had any breakthrough? No. If you have a breakthrough, you won't be using the word if. You will know of a certainty. The Bible says he repeated the same word the second time and the third, meaning after three hours, there was no breakthrough. If Jesus prayed for three hours, no breakthrough. You know why the Lord was making him understand? Take a decision, young man. It's not about just fasting and fasting every December and January. Take a decision and move forward in life. The Bible says at the end of the third hour, he said, if this cup cannot be taken away, meaning he was yet to get a response from his father. He said, let thy will be done. Then the next statement, he said, are you still sleeping? He said, rise. My attackers are at the door. For the Son of Man goes, meaning he has now taken a decision. I have prayed three hours, waiting to hear God. God has not spoken. Well, I have taken a decision, I head to the cross. And the Lord is asking the church, I'm weary of your fast, that your ritual. He said, take a decision, advance. And he says, I give you till end of February 2020. You know, you don't speak on behalf of God if he has not sent you. That's trouble. I speak as a man sent by God, meaning I'm speaking on behalf of God and the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What decision does he expect you to take? I'll just give you one or two examples. If you are a man and you have a wife, and you don't have a job, and your wife has a job, and she's helping with the rent, 
the children's school fees, failing of the car, taking care of the house, it's good. I praise and I salute such women. that God will reward you mightily. God wants the man to, for example, say, you know what? I appreciate you taking care of the school fees, the rent, and you're feeding me, but I think enough is enough. I won't feed, for, I should provide for your feeding. Not you provide for my feeding. If God can't feed me, let me go. <laughs> and I notice everyone in the scripture, like Esther who said, if I perish, I perish. She didn't perish. The Hebrew man says, we are ready to burn. They didn't burn. Everyone who took such decisions moved forward in life. I didn't say, don't say she shouldn't pay the rent. No, no, no. That would be too brash to start. But start from food and say, I will not eat until God makes a way. Say, for how long? Until God makes a way. How long can you survive? Let's wait and see. Take a decision. And for once, be a man. Because everyone needs to take a decision based on what they're facing in life. I'll give you another example and I close. If a woman was raped and she's hurting, most women who are raped are hurting. God says, You have hurt enough. I give you two options. Go to the police, report the rape. Don't say you are protecting, don't protect, you protected enough. Go to the police, make a report. Go to social media, expose him or forgive him and hand him over to God and move on. God says if you stay in that position, you'll be neither cold nor hot. He said, at the end of February, I will spool you out of my mouth despite the fact that you were wronged. He says, I will not take it anymore from the church. It's desecrating the glory of God. It will not have it anymore. You have two options. Go the legal way, and there's nothing wrong in it. Let him be prosecuted. Get your judgment, your vengeance, your reprieve from the law. Or, if you don't want to talk, then walk up to him, tell him, you wronged me, but I forgive you in the name of Jesus. But I hand you over to the great God who judges both the living and the dead. He will judge what you have done before me, to your 10th generation and walk away and leave the heart and move on. I gave you two examples. And these are the things God is expecting. Moses was at the Red Sea in Exodus 14. Stand still. God said, who told you them to tell them stand still? We want to pray. Pray where? He said, tell them to advance. It's time to advance. It's time to move forward. It's time to appraise, and it's time to take tough and strong decisions. And the Lord will help you. Amen. He will give you the enabling grace. Amen. Say, what about the fast? Leave the fast. You have been fasting since you are still hurting. Leave the fast. It's not sorting anything out. It's a yoke that God said I did not put on you. Men did. Now take a decision. That's how you move forward with Christ Jesus. Abraham was not fasting, yet he attained the fullness of what God had for him. What was he doing? Decisions. Decisions. He got to a state, the flocks were too much. He said, Lord, take a decision. You go right, I go left. You go left, I go right. And he did and did till he got to the pinnacle of what God had for him. I said... One of the things that stop men from making it in life, in Mark 4, the Lord gave five things. Satan, which is one. Persecution, which is based on lack of understanding. He said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lost, cares of all the things, and deceitfulness of riches, meaning wrong teaching, on riches, on wrong concept on riches. And I remember I said, every increase that comes into your life is basically not all the time demarcated into five portions, but not all the time. 
But basically, you know, when you pray, he said when you pray, say the Lord, our Father which art in heaven. It's a prototype. That doesn't mean any time you want to pray, say our Father which art in heaven. A little bit. No, 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 no. He's just giving you a basic structure to work with. And it's given into five portions. It says, give to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar. So there's a portion of the government which is taken through tax. Romans 13 says, render taxes as due. So if you hide your tax, you are actually disobeying the word of God. <laughs> Only the FIRS will like that teaching. Most people will not like that. Praise God. I, I'm not preaching for them. <laughs> Amen. There's a portion for God. It's called the seed. That's number two. There's a portion for you. It's called the bread. That's why it says that a man to whom God gives riches and it allows him to eat and drink and enjoy the fruit of his labor. So there's a portion for you which is called the bread. He gave it seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So we've seen the government has a portion. God has a portion. You have a portion. We said there's a portion for investment. And you should invest so that you can make what? More increase. The Bible says the tree that is fruitful, it proves that it may what? Make more fruits. There's a portion for investment. And there's a portion for family. The Bible says the man that cannot provide for his family has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. And once those five are the structure you're working with, now sometimes more may tilt to one than the other, and sometimes all may go in one direction occasionally, like the case of the rich man in Mark 10. Everything was demarcated for the poor. He said, sell all you have, give everything to the poor. Now the Lord can override that structure, but that's the basic structure you work with. Amen. Amen. Now, we want to look at one or two other things. We looked at the rich fool. Now, I want to look at one or two things that you need to understand about money. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Money can fail. Genesis 47. Money can fail. Meaning, it can fail to actualize the desired goal. I've seen somebody who has money, wants to rent a property, and the landlord said, I don't like your face, so I will not give it to you. Money failed him. I've seen people who are sick, they went to the best hospitals in the world to get well, but the doctor's report says you have three months to leave. Money failed him. <laughs> I've seen so many cases where money failed the person. And so your quest of gathering money, you must remember that it can fail. Now, the Bible says, I'm trying to find where it is in Proverbs, it says, money answereth all, not some, all things. So there is barely an answer. So there's barely a question money will not answer. Money will answer all questions, but it cannot solve all problems. Faith solves all problems, but money answers all questions. A question is, how long do I have to live? Money tells you you have two months to live. That's money. Then the question is, how long do I have to live? Faith says as long as you wish. Money has failed. Faith has worked. Genesis 47. I read from verse 13 to 16. Genesis 47 from verse 13 to 16. And there was no bread in all the land, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of the famine. And Joseph gathered up all the money that was found in the land of Egypt and the land of Canaan for the corn which they bought. And Joseph bought the money into Pharaoh's house. And when the money failed, and when the money what? Failed in the land of Egypt. It's good. God wants, you know, thought John 2 says, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul. God wants you to have more than enough. He wants you to be rich. He wants you to be prosperous. But he wants you to know that money 
can feel. Do you desire to live and operate God's way of doing things? Do you desire to understand how faith works? Fundamentals of Faith is a book written by Kayode Adeshoga. It teaches in simple terms how to operate the God kind of faith that helps you overcome all hurdles of life. Fundamentals of Faith is available for purchase at Trem Bookshop Obani Koro Lagos and Bible Wonderland Stadium Surulere Lagos. Get a copy today. And so money failed in the land of Egypt. If money didn't fail, those billionaires will not die young. If money didn't fail, those former world leaders will not die of cancer. If money did not fail, so many things, royals will not have accidents and die on the road. They will buy life, though money can buy life to some extent. But money fails. But God never fails. God is the, money is the only rival to God, not Satan. That's why the Bible says you cannot serve God and mammon. If someone says, I have faith, I'm going to buy that, I'm going to own that building. While you're praying, someone just says, how much is the building? Say 200 million, say 300 million. And he buys it and it's all over. He has rivaled your faith. So he has rivaled God in your life. Money rivals God, not Satan. Satan never, he cannot rival God, but money does. And so it can fail, but God will never, never, never fail. Amen. Amen. God wants you to be rich, but he does not want you to have faith in riches. Proverbs eleven twenty eight. God wants you to be rich, but he does not want you to what? Have faith in riches. Proverbs eleven twenty eight, and I read. He that trusted in his riches Shall what? Fall. Shall fall. Why I like us to read it together? I don't want it to be like if I'm the one just conjoining it from one Bible that we don't know where it's coming from. He that trusted in his riches shall fail. He shall fall. So there's nothing wrong in having riches, but there's everything wrong having your trust in riches. Psalm 62. Psalm 62. And I read verse 10. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increases, don't set your heart on them. Now he's giving you guide when riches increases, because you're going to experience increase in riches. So it's warning, don't set your heart on it if it increases. Sorry, when it increases, not if, when it increases. Don't set your heart on it. Don't put your confidence in it. First Timothy Chapter 6 and verse 17. Charge them that are rich in this world. So they are all guide to riches. You know, money has its own rules. And if you understand its rules, you will enjoy it. If you don't understand its rules, electricity has its gain. If you understand its rule, it will benefit you. If a man does not understand its rules, it could be his end. It could like electrocute him. But it is for everyone's gain. But you must understand its rules. That's how money is. You must understand its rules. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who give us richly all things to enjoy. So it's a charge. Don't put your confidence in riches. It says, charge them who are rich. So it's a charge to the rich. And I believe I'm talking to the rich. So I'm leaving you with a charge. 
Don't put your confidence in what? Uncertain riches. Uncertain riches. But your trust in what? The living God who giveth you what? Riches to enjoy. It's so quiet. And um, I want to believe you're meditating on this scripture so that when the money comes, you remember what to do, right? You work gently when the alert comes. We don't want to see the change on how you work. It should still be gently. You work brisk. When the alert comes, you should remain brisk. If you greet everybody, good morning, sir. When the alert comes, don't do like this. Hello. Bless you. No. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. All of you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay, you understand because you've been there. Praise God. A good name is better than riches. People don't chase good names. They chase riches. In actual fact, you don't chase riches. You chase services. When God blesses a man with riches, it's told Solomon, he said, I will give you riches that no man has ever found. Now, money didn't drop from the sky. No. What did God do? He gave him wisdom. Wisdom to solve crisis. And that's how there's a problem of communication. Then what happens? Apple gives you a phone, and then you transfer your money to them, and then it solves that long-distance communication, and by such, they gain riches. If you're sick, you go to the hospital, they say to register is 30,000. Say, wow. Say it's expensive. Say it's the only specialist that can handle this one. You have no choice. You pay the 30,000. They say consultancy is this. What happens? You have a crisis. He renders services to solve the crisis, then extract money from you. So if God is going to give you riches, he will give you wisdom to solve what? Crisis. Crisis. And as you are solving it, there's a uh, company that made billions of profit during the Ebola crisis. Why? They were selling um, sanitizer. There's an Ebola crisis. And somebody saw Santa and made billions. What was he doing? He was giving you services to prevent you from having Ebola. One of these days, we'll look at how to make money. I know that's what you want to hear. Everybody wants to hear that. You'll make money. You'll bless the work of your hands. In the time of farming, when people are grumbling, you will not know there is anything called inflation. Amen. You'll be smiling to the bank Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22, I read verse 1. A good name is rather to be chosen than great riches and loving favor rather than silver and gold. A good name, you know, one of the inheritance you can leave, I've told people it's good to leave properties for your children. But I ask myself, there are certain names you bear in this life. Let, let me mention one, for example. Anywhere in the world, you say, my name is Josie Mandela. They say, oh, are you related to former? He said, oh, it's my father. Now, what do you think is going to happen to you anywhere in the world? That's a better inheritance than money or property. It opens more than money. If that person gets to the same American border and doesn't have a visa, the son of Mandela, they'll find a way to get him in. <laughs> and you with visa, they can still deport the person with money. A good name is better than riches. Favor is better than silver and gold. That's why you find people, you know, I, I've been in situations in my life where I didn't have money. 
and I got better benefits than people who had money. I've been in situations where we're queuing to pay to enter a place. I just say, you! And I didn't have money. Go right in. They just say you to go right in. And they tell the people who are queuing to pay, they say, after a while, the place is full. You can't enter. Money failed them, and favor worked faster and better than silver and gold. I've seen people give somebody a house to move in without payment because of favor. And I've seen people with money denied assets. They say, who is that man from? Where is he from? Say, oh, never. I don't want people from this area in my house. Let them go. And somebody comes without money. Say, let him in and let him pay later. It's called favor. It's better than silver and gold. I say you need to be strong to retain riches. The same Proverbs 11. Proverbs 11. I read verse 16. A gracious woman retaineth honor, and strong men retain riches. And one of the definitions of strong men are people that take tough and very strong decisions. Disciplined, tough, sacrificial decisions. I met a man who told me, I started my business with 6,000 Naira. There's barely anybody who has not had 60,000 Naira. His business is worth close to 5 billion now. And he said, and I noticed his life when he started his business, he wouldn't do, no, this. he wouldn't even buy clothes. You see him, he's washing clothes, doing laundry, and he doesn't wear fine clothes. His works, they would take light. You see him in the office, it was hours upstairs, he was living downstairs. He would put on candle till 9, 30, 10, 11, and he's still working. I find it difficult to relate to somebody who at 9 a.m. in the morning is still in bed? I personally believe, except they're established in their business, I don't think such a man can ever make it in this life. That's my personal belief. I believe you have been blessed by that message, and I know your faith has been built up, and I know all those challenges in life are all going to fall before you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to know Hebrews 12 says, Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. You need him in this walk. And so if you're out there and you don't have Jesus in your life, I want you to say after me, say, Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the only begotten Son of God. Come into my life, be my Lord and my Savior. It's as simple as that. Displayed on the screen is diverse information on how you can interact and reach out to us. Take advantage of it, and I'll be expecting to hear from you. Till I come your way again, same time next week. I want to tell you, don't give up. Faith works. It's working and it will work in your life. God bless you.